Today, we find ourselves in Florida. All of this running around the country with John, he is such a goofball. Hi. I forget sometimes that he's been to space. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All of our life, we're touching something, unless we're falling. Well, imagine falling and never touching anything. Gravity's still there, you just don't experience it because you're in this constant free fall around the Earth. That Earth you've always seen in pictures is now moving beneath you. It's so much more fun to see the Earth from a helmet and a spacesuit. We all want to fly. You can, you are. I was floating. It was not magic, it was real. I worked here for two and a half years, and I flew from, I left the earth from here. <laughs> I love it here. There's so much more to Florida than swamps and gators. It's also home to the Kennedy Space Center. This is where NASA launches most of its rockets. Robotic arm. There's one on Space Station. I was supposed to ride that, but there was a problem on my mission, and something got stuck, and so I actually had to do all my work by now. On top of being a great travel buddy, John is also a great mentor to a new generation. And someone who has been inspiring me on a daily basis. One of these young people is Alyssa Carson. She wants to be an astronaut too. She wants to be one of the first people to go to Mars. Okay, yeah, so tell me how old you were and why you have this like strong passion to go to Mars. Yeah, looking back, I think it was around when I was three years old or so. I was watching cartoons and they had an episode where the characters actually went to Mars. So I started asking my dad all these questions like, are there people on Mars? You know, can I be one of those people? And I think that's important for kids to know they can start working towards and doing things to actually work towards their ultimate dream you know, before they're even in college, before they're in high school. I am so glad that I recorded Alyssa's story because she really is reaching for the stars. And it's perfect to take back and share with the kiddos back home. I recommend a kid to do what they love to do. Don't set out with the goal as the ultimate thing. Set out down that path to achieve that goal and figure out what you like to do along the way. Meeting John Harrington, it was a super awesome experience with John being the first Native American astronaut. He's kind of made his way of being the first in where he's come from and what he's done. And it's the same thing with wanting to go to Mars, wanting to be kind of with some of those trailblazers. Kids can do things almost as well as a lot of the adults can. So kind of popping that bubble and rooting for, rooting for the kids. <laughs> You know, growing up, I knew I didn't want to sit behind a desk. Before I became an astronaut, even before I went to college, I originally wanted to become a park ranger. You know, there's something special about being outdoors, and there's nothing like it. And no one knows that better than Jennifer Farr Davis. I was talking about her. <laughs> zooming in, zooming in. Look at that. She holds the world record for being the fastest person to walk the Appalachian Trail. The Appalachian Trail goes through 14 states from Georgia to Maine and stretches over 2,000 miles. John and I had to hear more about Jennifer's life-changing journey. So we headed a few states north to the Great Smoky Mountains, just a day's drive from the Kennedy Space Center. So this is where it's Tennessee and North Carolina? Yep. Cool. Both states, right here. Both See states? if you guys okay. can both be in both states. Oh, okay. Well, this is a cool little cabin. Yeah. Okay, so you did that hike in five months, but to me, five months doesn't seem like the biggest speed record. 
No, no. So when most people hike the trail, it takes five to six months. But like I've done the full Appalachian Trail three times. And it was the last time where I really, I wanted to see what my best was on the trail. So I was trying for the record and I got it. Appalachian Trail made me overcome, I think, a false sense of confidence and really it empowered me. I never felt as beautiful as I did when I was hiking. I didn't carry a mirror and I didn't have billboards or magazines or commercials telling me what I should look like. For five months, my reflection was my interaction with other hikers. If I could make someone else smile, it made me feel pretty. Gatlinburg, which <laughs> counts, but... And then after coming over 2,000 miles and hiking through 14 states, all of a sudden, I based my self-worth a whole lot less on how I looked and a whole lot more on what I could do. I never thought I would ever try to set a record when I started hiking or backpacking. One question I had before starting a family was, well, what is my best? how therapeutic and how healing it is to spend time using your body in a positive way in a positive community and being in nature. I didn't think it would change my life. I didn't do much hiking or camping as a child. Growing up, I always, I always thought that nature was beautiful, but I, I never saw myself as a part of nature and I never saw myself as a part of all this beauty until I hiked. Do you think you could hike the Appalachian Trail? I think so. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to. I read I, Eric Ryback's three books. Oh, really? I really did the Appalachian Trail. The Pacific Crest Pacific Trail. Pacific Trail. Come I, like, I want to do that someday. Do you think I could go to space? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or Mars. You can go to Mars. Yeah. Yeah, I'll never come back. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Appalachian Trail! And cut. It's really amazing to hear how being a part of nature has impacted Jennifer. She's already inspired so many people through her passion for the outdoors. And her story will be perfect to bring back home with me. Okay, we're gonna bring it.